Hey, welcome to Adventure Streamy guys. We're going to be starting something new here. We're doing a collaboration with JB Tackle and Niantic. And we're going to start something called Tackle Tuesday. Discussions about tackle and expertise and how to rig certain things. So Kyle, tell, tell everybody a little bit about what you're thinking about the program and then we'll, we'll get started. Well, we just came up with the idea, get some more tutorials out there, some more information to customers, stuff that we can point them in the direction when they come in, like a series of videos that they could watch and get some more information. And then in talking to you, we thought we'd try to make it a little bit more mainstream, just get the information out to everybody. Yeah, well, we're excited about this. Just talking to you a little bit about it in your office, I learned a lot and I've been fishing for a long time. So today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about some reels. Um, we're trying to get it somewhat species specific for this time of season. So um, we're going to talk about some fluke setups, but we're going to also cover like generic, what makes a good reel, what makes a good rod for different fisheries. Are you trying to get in and into it on a budget or are you trying to have a high-end specific outfit sure. and so that's the type of stuff that we were talking about by the way it's springtime right now and uh, we're in Connecticut so we're gonna talk about three sets of fluke rigs right now um, we're gonna talk about you know getting an angler in from the budget end of things which is you know your introductory whether they're new into the sport and it's it's pretty good to stay at a reasonable price point if you don't know a lot about what you're doing or you're new into it because the problem is you just don't understand what you're going to be how you're going to be fishing and what you're going to be doing the most of and what you want out of the rod and reel and really as you start to move up the line from an introductory outfit which is usually at a lower price point to something that's more advanced or high end the type of reel gets more specific with an expensive reel but it's almost a waste of money until you figure out what you want. And what are the differences in the, ex in the cost between an advanced reel and a beginner reel? To go from the, the like introductory price point to, to the mid price point is like $100. It can be, you know, a lot of the manufacturers specifically make reels at 10 to $15 price points increments. In general, for us, we try to jump people up to the next level because the in-between stuff you're really not getting enough bang for the buck to stay there so if that's really where you want to be then we you know give you the pros and cons and then to go to the ultra high end from the the base model you could be at two to two hundred and fifty dollars more because some of the high-end reels have really gone up there in price because they're just engineered very well and they have a lot to them you were talking before a little bit about the bearings the, all the, those were the major differences the major differences in the reels are how they're the material they're made out of then the engineering inside the reel which includes the bearings how well things are supported so a more high-end reel is generally going to have all the parts of the reel supported by a ball bearing rather than a sleeve bearing there's pluses and minuses to that the bear ball bearings require more maintenance where the sleeve bearings tend to be a little bit more durable um, so I kind of laid out a uh, pen squall which is one of our shop picks for the introductory fluke guy um, it's got a level wind on it it's made out of a graphite bodied case which really prevents a lot of corrosion and it's but it is a multi-piece frame so you're going to get wa more water intrusion through the different cracks in it they've done things to help make make it stay corrosion protected but that's just one of the you know differences between the reels then at the mid price point I grabbed two different ones an Avit which is an American made reel it's also a lever drag reel which gives you a different option and staying with a star drag reel the new Daiwa Saltist which has just been redesigned for this year at the high end or specialty market I grabbed a Maxell which is going to give you a auto engaging so it's got a thumb bar release on the back side and then it's an auto engaging reel for jigging purposes very narrow level winds itself basically a, a specific reel for a specific purpose and explain what you mean by auto engage so when you press down the thumb bar that's removing the pinion and main gear it's separating them just like a lever on you know this standard reel and when that happens, then if you rotate the handle, there's a mechanism in the reel that puts it back into gear. And it works really well for jigging, um, whether it's jigging with a bucktail or jigging with like a flat fall or a, you know, a slow pitch jig. 
and that's versus with a lever drag, you have another extra step. You got to push, push the lever, lever forward, forward, then turn the reel. Then turn the reel. So a lever drag, it, you're not disengaging the two gears. You're going to separate the drag and take the drag off, and that's what's going to get it down. So um, that makes a big difference. So for fluke fish in the Northeast, what kind of line do you recommend? I would le recommend like a Power Pro or a different braided line that's going to be, you know, in a 20 to 30 pound test, maybe even a 40 if you're deep water fishing. Um, that's going to cover you in bays and out in deeper water. 30 is probably our most popular pound test. As we talked earlier, there's a lot of difference between where you're fishing. Even just, we're here in Connecticut, our boats are going from here, you know, to Block Island Montauk, and then a lot of boats up in Rhode Island, maybe fishing the Rhode Island beaches. You're gonna be fishing different weights, different things. So you kind of have to base your rod on where you're going. Um, this rod was what we chose earlier to match up with the generic one. You can get some combos. They're different brands. so. This isn't more or less like a brand specific thing. It's more matching the tip action and the components of the rod to the type of angler and where you're trying to be. Um, so this is a Sojourn rod by Shimano. This one's 49. You can get rods similar to this anywhere from the 39 to $59 price point. One thing you do want to be careful of, especially with specialty or less expensive rods, is making sure that the reel seat will accept your reel. This rod has a large reel seat. It's one of the reasons I picked it. Um, it'll fit a variety of introductory reels, but some of the either real inexpensive rods or the specialty rods where they're trying to keep the weight and the sizing down will have a, a small reel seat and some of the reels won't fit on them. So just be conscious of that. It's a Sojourn. It's been redesigned a couple times, but it's a great introductory rod for you guys. You got a cork rear grip, uh, EVA foregrip, and it just, it's pretty generic. You can bass fish with it. You can fluke fish with it, sea bass, everything. Um, if you were doing some back bay stuff, it's definitely way too heavy, but you can find another rod that's lighter in the same price point. So it's not like you can't make this combo out of something else. What's the ballpark price of that rig right there? That is just over a hundred dollars. So it, you know, it's not an inexpensive combo. When we do a lot of consumer shows, everybody's budget is different. And so for us, I'd rather see people spend a little bit more money on the reel and compromise on the rod because the, the rod is, some, the reel is something that you can carry from rod to rod and the rods don't have, I mean, they come with lifetime warranties or five-year warranties, things like that. But in general, they're not going to stand up for the, a long haul. I mean, the sun beats them up, the finish, everything like that. So it's something that people usually trade up, you know, not frequently, but within a couple of years, they may change or do something different. Um, but the reel, you want it to be not a maintenance issue. You want it to stand up for you. So put the money there and then upgrade. That's great advice. Uh, at the mid price point, now we're starting to get a little bit more specific with the rod. So are you gonna buy a jigging rod? Are you gonna buy a dead stick rod? What do you want with it? It doesn't have to be super specific, but you're getting a little bit more specific. So there's definitely more options. I personally like a jigging rod. Um, I'll grab this one. This is a new, it's a slow pitch rod from um, Tsunami. And we've sold them really well at the shows for the guys that want something light in the tip, good sea bass rod, but definitely has enough backbone to um, fluke fish with. If you're fishing in our area and you're using over eight ounces of weight, you know, with the bait rig, probably not the rod for you. It's just, you're gonna be loading the tip quite a bit before you even have the fish on, but it's gonna work a jig great. So this would be a nice option and you could put it with either of these reels or one, you know, something else on the market in that price point. Um, and that combos, you're gonna be, depending on which reel you go with, like 250 to $300 for the outfit. For the whole combo. For the whole combo. If you're gonna also do in this mid price point for more of like a dead stick rod or something that's a bait rod, it's gonna be very specific on how you're fishing, whether you wanna feel the fish pick it up, how much resistance you want for the fish. The big thing is the taper of the rod and how it loads and the more money you spend on a rod, just like when we were talking about the reels, there's a difference in price point. Um, when you talk about the different rods, it's mostly in components and then blank technology. So to make a blank load at different points, give you a flexible tip, but still have backbone at the right spot 
and be durable or have that great parabolic action that you're looking for but still be again be durable that's where you're paying for when you're fluke fishing the fluke on a bait rig a lot of times they pick it up and you feel the resistance and you want to be able to wait for that split sef second if the tip is too stiff you're going to be yanking that bait away from the fish um, if you're trying to fish a big bait like right now with the bigger fish you know for a legal size a lot of guys are fishing a whole squid or a big strip bait or something like that it's going to take a second for that fish to get it to where you want to really set the hook or you know start reeling down on them so sometimes you want a lighter tip for that whereas if you're fishing a three ounce bucktail up to maybe a six or eight ounce bucktail like some guys are fishing in the deeper water you need to have a fairly heavy tip so now you're starting to get two rods more specific what you're looking for and that's where you you hit that at the mid price point and then when you step up to the higher end it's in general going to be a much more specific combo and you may have a, an expensive combo to do one thing and a less expensive combo to do the other because you don't need that same technology in the other outfit. That's really how we recommend to the different customers to, to step up through the process. Mid price point, I just grabbed a, a Lama glass, which is cork grips, traditional taper, meaning that the tip is gonna load, then you're gonna have more backbone and as you keep working down towards the rod, it's gonna have more and more backbone. It's not quite as parabolic as some of the jigging rods. And then just all the, the, the components and the features is all personal preference. And that's how you're gonna pick between several different rods that are very similar to each other. I brought up a sample of a, a black hole blank that we're building right now. And we've mocked this up for a customer. There's, when you go to a custom rod, the custom rod is all about the components and being able to choose what you want in con blank configurations, all that type of stuff. It's not necessarily that you're getting that much better of a rod than you could buy off the rack. The, the high-end rods that are out there by ma major brands are excellent. You know, the quality's there, the components are there, everything. It's just you don't get to spec it the way you want. A custom rod allows you to take those same components and modify them to be, create what you want out of a rod. And like in this rod's case, the customer went with a split grip. Some guys like a smaller um, rear grip. And just to give you a little idea, this is your traditional jig and rod off the rack. It doesn't really have a foregrip. This customer wanted a foregrip. So, th so that's something that you can add into your custom rod, but your action out of the two blanks is gonna be very similar. So this is a Fluke sea bass rod. That's sweet. And the custom, customer bought a, a production version of this at the show and wants this one built to his boat colors. The other thing is regarding blanks, you can change how the rod feels by cutting blanks. So by changing the tip diameter changes the rod drastically. So if you pick out a blank, you can hold it in a few different spots and try to pick that action that's gonna work exactly the way you want. And that's what custom does for you. We do a lot of that, especially on the higher end, because now the guys, they don't really wanna pick off the rack. They wanna be able to design what they want and give it that custom look. So we're gonna wrap up our segment here on the rods and reels for fluke fishing in the Northeast. And there's a lot of options out there, a lot of technical information. Um, so at j and that's a big focus of ours is being able to educate the angler from the beginner setup all the way to the expert. As you're watching, if you've had any um, questions or have any comments, we'd love to hear them. So feel free to, to comment to us and we'll make sure to get back to you with some information. Thanks for watching and come see us soon. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please support the channel and subscribe. Until next time, enjoy your adventures.